want to dedicate this first piece to all the students who are going to benefit from the College Textbook Fund, which we're supporting tonight, who are the first generation in their families to go to college and who are from migrant families. Let's do a poll here. How many of you were the first generation in your family to go to college? Hands? Yes. And I want to dedicate this to all of you as well. Make it out of the sari that wraps you in tender celebration, like the mother you longed for. Make it out of the mother you got in all her wounded magnificence. Make it out of every scar and callus on your father's hands, and how you always wanted tough mechanic's hands like his, credentialed by each ground down fingernail, each palm line seamed with grease, distill it from the offering of his hands to 50 years of labor to guarantee that his daughters would never have to work with theirs. Make it to find out what your own hands are good for. A friend once gave my parents a scratched old Skeeter Davis record. They loved it. The lyrics captured all their favorite philosophies. Only the strong survive. I didn't cry today. I'm gonna join the family circle once again. Country Western is perfect migrant music. Hardship, <laughs> loss, suffering, all wrapped up in saccharine sentimentality to make it bearable. We overdress, we migrants. We care too much how we look to you. We get it wrong. We ought to look like we don't give a fuck. We should be ridiculously groomed, bearing elaborate gifts. We are too formally grateful. We cringe in silent shame for you. When you don't offer food or drink, eat before us without sharing. Serve yourselves first. Insult us without knowing. Two white Americans said to me when I shared my donut with them, We've never seen anyone cut a donut into three pieces. We calibrate hunger precisely. We define enough differently from you. Enough is what's available, shared between everyone present. We are incapable of saying, as you can so easily, sorry, that's not enough for you. We absorb information without asking questions. Questions cost us jobs, visas lives. We watch and copy. We try to please. We hold back in conversations. We don't contradict, so we don't show you up. You mistake it for a lack of intellectual confidence. Mm. How much we can do without is our strength. But you find it comic, pitiable, miserly. You just can't imagine how a family of eight lives in a one-room apartment. You don't want to think how someone survives on $7 an hour. Mm. It makes you uncomfortable when we eat stems and peels, dry our clothes in the sun, repair instead of replace. Mm. You mistake austerity, living without waste or excess, for deprivation. You see, it's our job to protect you from the discomfort of seeing inequality, to cushion your sense of cosmopolitan hipness when you hang out with us, without ever pushing you too far. We admire your $65 haircut when you pay us $22 a day to raise your child. We love your children when their strollers cost more than a year's rent where we come from. We turn away when they throw food around like another toy to hide our tears at images we carry of children fighting over half a banana Children picking grains of rice off the floor. We recoil when you joke how they'll do social justice work in Palestine as teenagers. As if Palestine will never be anything but a fucking social justice summer camp, a case study in genocidal oppression for wealthy American teens with wannabe radical parents. I had a housemate who offered me her heavily used bedding when she left. It's dirty, worn out, she said. But you often find uses for things I'd throw out, so I'm appealing to your sense of parsimony. A man I once dated, award-winning Israeli filmmaker of social justice documentaries, 
gave me a broken lamp as a housewarming gift. I know you fix things, he said. So I make this work from rage. Every smug, idiotic face I've ever wanted to smash into the carnage of war. Every encounter that left my throat choked with what I dared not say. I excavate the words that hid in my churning stomach through visa controls. Words I swallowed down until over the border. They are still there. They knew I would come back for them. This is for the hands, hacked off the Arawaks by Columbus and his men, locked off the lonely children by the Spanish priests, baskets of severed hands, delivered at day's end to Belgian plantation masters in the Congo, thumbs chopped off Indian weavers by the British. This is because I still have hands. So I make it out of every scar and callus on my father's hands, and how I always wanted tough, Mechanics hands like his, credentialed by each ground down fingernail, each palm line seamed with grease. I distill it from the offering of his hands to 50 years of labor to guarantee that his daughters would never have to work with theirs. I make it out of the sari that wraps me in tender celebration, like the mother I rediscover. I make it out of the mother I got in all her wounded magnificence. Yeah.